My name is T-R-E-S dash to B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. With the discovery date of August 21st in 2006 is when they noticed me at first. I was confirmed a planet on September 8th in 2006 officially. My birthday! I was discovered by an astronomer named Francis T. O'Donovan. That is for sure. First seen on the Transatlantic Exoplanet Survey, or you could call it TRES. It's an acronym, I say. This all happened in California. You will see at the famous Palomar Observatory. My discovery also took place at the Lowell Observatory located in Arizona. Now, here's more about me. My name is T-R-E-S dash to B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. GSC 03549-02811 is the star that I orbit and a long named one. My parent star is a yellow main sequence star similar to your sun. Just to keep you on par, I belong to a constellation in the far northern sky. Its name is Draco, which is Latin for dragon, I imply. I'm 750. System. That's where I'll stay. I'm thought to be the darkest known exoplanet, reflecting less than 1% of any life that does hit. My mass and radius does indicate I'm a gas giant with a ball composition similar to Jupiter. You're super giant. I'm likely to be tidally locked to my parent star. I'm extremely dark and completely. My name is T-R-E-S dash to B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You'll learn about them in this song and why you should care. The sun is a ball of plasma like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel. This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field. When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field, it gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots they are real this energy released is caused by magnetic knots when one of these knots breaks it releases solar flares so you are taught solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one these solar flares race through space at the speed of light creating a solar proton storm these storms are no delight when millions Tens of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere. These storms are called coronal mass ejections, as you see right here. These CMEs reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour. When they hit Earth, it doesn't hurt living beings even with such power. The Earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm. When a CME is too big, it creates a solar superstorm that occur once or twice a century so you've been warned if a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age it would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun i do say if this type of cme traveled across space towards the earth it would reach you in one day yeah that's fast for what that is worth its shock wave would compress earth's magnetic field making it frail the two magnetic fields would merge stretching earth's field into a thin tail this stretch tail can't contain the this energy anymore when it snaps it releases explosive energy towards the earth that it stored this creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm normally no living thing on earth would even know it had formed the only thing it would affect 
fact is your electricity Because you rely on this so much It would disrupt human life, you see Because Earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers This geomagnetic storm would shut down the power Humans would be overturned If one of these storms hit the Earth Electricity and internet would not work All things powered by electricity would turn off Along with all networks Computers wouldn't work Along with phones and electronic devices No refrigerators or any other household appliances Even though we can't stop these terrible solar storms Their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned Engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids Until the solar storm passes Earth Preventing blackouts we forbid Humans need to prepare for these types of storms To prevent being thrown back to the Stone Age before they form A cool event humans experience from any solar storm Is the Aurora Borealis at the two poles is where they perform I'm the life-giving sun, you all need me to live But I am unpredictable, so solar storms I give I am the sun, the center of your solar system I do erupt intense high energy radiation This radiation I expel is called the solar flare you learn about them in this song and why you should care I'm a super massive black hole found in the center of almost all massive galaxies I'm a super massive black hole there are theories of how I'm formed come and join me like me the primordials a tiny hypothetical black hole in 1974 Stephen Hawking theorized its role primordials were formed in the early universe but we'll learn about this more when I teach that topics course on to the most common type called the stellar black hole but let's first see why a star exists before it loses control the pressure from the nuclear fuel in the core pushes outward so greatly while the of an equal power pushing in is caused by gravity this equal pressure does create the star's main sequence stage that means the star is stable in its present burning age when stars with the sun's mass run out of nuclear fuel in its core it becomes a red giant that quietly becomes a white dwarf but stars with 25 the mass of your solar system sun runs out of nuclear fuel its gravity crushes the core and becomes a stellar it's the most common type in the universe now i will tell you how i'm created of course now i'm a super massive black hole the third type of black hole seen believed to be found in the center of any major galaxy a black hole's a region of space with a force of gravity so strong that nothing not even light can escape you've learned in this song how i acquired my mass is still yet to be determined and astronomers are still working on how i'm formed that is certain some think i'm formed from the collapse of a massive cloud of gas during the early stages of the formation of galaxies with mass my parts start with the accretion disk orbiting around me it's superheated gas and dust swirling around the singularity the singularity is the very center of a black hole you see made up of matter collapsed into a region of infinite density the event horizons the radius around the singularity which energy and matter cannot escape the black hole's gravity the innermost stable orbits the last place material orbit safely without the risk of falling past the point of no return in me a photon sphere is a location where gravity is so strong that light can travel in circles and orbiting the black hole are photons i feed on stars dust and gas and produce jets of near light speed blasting particles and radiation out of my poles as you can see these are relativistic jets and the last part i'll talk about thank you for learning with me now i am out i'm the milky way a barred spiral galaxy you now see with an estimated visible diameter of 100 to 200,000 light years across me. I'm the Milky Way. This song is 
is about Vax of my galaxy I'm not the biggest but I'm the one you call home Actually I am the Milky Way The galaxy You are all A part of Your solar system's A small part of me Here's more of me you love Your galaxy is a gravitationally bound collection of stars in a spiral swirling through space that's what you know about me this far i am one in about two trillion galaxies in this observable universe let's give some examples of my size in the coming verse i do have from my center to the edge of me which in light years measures 52,850 when you measure me from one edge across my entirety I'm about a hundred thousand light years across as you can plainly see I do probably contain one 100 to 400 billion stars you know that's an estimate that humans created but there could be more to show to give you an example of my size well we'll look to my neighbor and see the spectacle goes by the name of the andromeda galaxy if you measure the Andromeda across from one side to the other It's about 220,000 light years wide It's my big brother This is IC1101 Galaxy I will now share It spans as much as 4 million light years That's a lot bigger if we're compared there are a lot of other things bigger than this called super clusters Laniakea is a good example I am part of its hard to muster the Laniakea super cluster is thought to be in size 520 million an estimate humans had comprised the next time you think earth is the center of the universe you know remember you're just a speck floating in trillions of galaxies in a space unknown Earth has a second moon, it's me, provisionally designated, 2016 HO3, Kamu Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. I was first spotted in April of 2016, by Pan Stars. Asteroid Survey Telescope You now see This telescope is located on Haleakala In Hawaii Which is all part of the Haleakala Observatory When I was discovered orbiting the Earth in a weird way Kamu'u Alava was the name they gave me even though it is extremely hard to say I am very small compared to Earth's moon measuring 164 feet across I'm tiny, it's true I circle the Earth in a repeating corkscrew-like trajectory Never closer than 40 to 100 times the 239,000 mile distance of your moon, you see I'm odd and 
this is why I don't reflect brightly in certain infrared frequencies or to the eye like other asteroids do. I'm a quirky satellite and this is true. Because of this, researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon flying free. Basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment. It's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree. When I was ejected into space, I am lunar debris. I am a near-Earth object also known as Neo, part of a group of near-Earth asteroids called Apollo. I'm an object in a specific type of core orbital configuration with a planet. I'm called a quasi-satellite. I know it's weird, but I didn't plan it. Earth has a second moon. It's me, provisionally designated. 2016 HO3 Kamu Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. I'm the ISS, the International Space Station. 1998 was the year that begun my construction. I make multiple orbits around the Earth every day. Let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space. I fly around the world every 90 minutes. I orbit the Earth 16 times in 24 hours. That's legit. I'm 357 feet long from end to end. And am I? After the moon, I'm the second brightest object in your sky. I have two bathrooms on board, there's also one gym. I have six sleeping quarters and six spaceship docks for the win. Here's a brief history about how I came to be. Pay attention to my incredible collaborative construction story. The idea of the space station was science fiction until the 1940s. The structure might be built by many nations. In the 1950s, designs of spaceships and space stations began to develop with the beginning of the space age and it gained traction. The first rudimentary station was created in 1969 by the linking of two Russian Soyuz vehicles in line. In 1984, the U.S. President Ronald Reagan told NASA to build the ISS for many nations. Then in 1998, the construction had begun of the only international space station. That year, the first segment of the ISS launched in November 20th by the Russian proton rocket named Zarya. It's no myth. The Unity node from the US launched December 4th by the space shuttle Endeavour set it on its course. The Endeavour met Zarya in orbit with the Unity node to make the first connection connection with the Russian segment, you know. In the year 2000, the first crew to man the space shuttle adrift was Bill Shepard, Yuri Gatsenko, and Sergei Krikalev. The U.S. lab module was added in 2001. Then the European and Japanese lab joined in 2008, and we're not done. The ISS consists of 50 nations, Canada, Japan, and the Russian Federation, the United States, and the European Space Agency. They are Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, and Italy. The Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden, Switzerland, and the famed United Kingdom. Maybe you will have the chance to visit me someday and be another part of the ISS and its history. I'm the ISS, the International Space Station. 1998 was the year that begun my construction. I make multiple orbits around the Earth every day. Let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space. Yeah.
palace or the northern lights In the night sky you can see the waves of dancing light Where are the northern lights? Where can they be seen? In the north or south magnetic poles is where you'll see their sheen The aurora borealis is caused by electrically charged particles Colliding into Earth's atmosphere from the sun with some pole What causes these colors? You can see in the sky And where are these When a solar wind is shot from the hot burning sun Out into space in all directions This solar wind is full of electrons and proton gas, you know But it's mostly made of electrons shot from the sun that glows When solar winds shot towards the earth, these particles travel at speeds Over a million miles per hour towards Earth's atmosphere, you see They can take two to four days for these particles to reach Earth, they're pushed to Earth's magnetic fields To the north and south poles Protecting you like a shield I'm an electron and I'm about to reach the Earth's north pole Falling from high energy to normal energy I'll show When I reach this normal energy I produce a photon This is where things get interesting You'll learn in this song When a photon hits Earth's atmosphere Which is made up of air Which includes oxygen and nitrogen The gases that will flare I am oxygen when a photon collides with me I spark the color in the aurora that is seen as green My name is Nitrogen And when a photon does hit me In the Earth's atmosphere My color is blue, it's what you'll see These greens and blues come in different shades You see, called the Aurora Borealis Nature's light show we be These reactions do take place 60 to 300 miles in the atmosphere A safe distance you can observe This color show very clear What other planets have an Aurora Borealis in their Saturn and Jupiter have some of these strong light shows What places in the north can you see the aurora geographically? Alaska, Canada, and Scandinavia are just three See the aurora borealis is cousin in Antarctica glow But it goes by the name of aurora australis as shown Galileo did coin the term aurora borealis first He coined this term in 1619 because of the color burst Next time you see the aurora just how this natural phenomenon produces a light show This is the aurora borealis or the northern lights In the night sky you can see the waves of dancing light Where are the northern lights? Where can they be seen? In the north or south magnetic poles is where you'll see their sheen
cancellation, Lyra, please stop by. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37, that's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013, now let's learn more about me. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37, that's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013. Now let's learn more about me. I'm a quasi star, also called the black hole star. How bizarre. I'm a hypothetical type of extremely massive luminous star. I'm a quasi star. I may have existed early in the history of the universe. Now let's learn more about me. I'm a quasi-star, and I am hypothetical, but what's this? It means I haven't been proven as yet to exist. I'm a theorized star, bigger than a red supergiant star. At 10 billion kilometers in radius, I'd be the biggest by far. Here's a size comparison of what I'd look like hypothetically in our universe against other stars, so you can clearly see. Let's start with your sun in the center of your solar system with a radius of 696,347. The sun is classified as a yellow dwarf star, which is massive to humans, but very small compared to other stars. I'm 7,000 times the size of your sun, which is quite impressive in size. I'd be bigger than anyone. This is Pollux, a red giant star. It's 5.5 million kilometers size this far but when you compare it to me it really looks tiny i would consume it if it got too close pulling it in with my gravity here's a red super giant star going by the name of beetlejuice with a radius of 617 million kilometers of energy to produce but when compared to me it is plain and clear to see i am tremendous next to it let's move on to the next star next to me this is you i scoot tight red super giant as well it's massive, you can tell This is what it looks like when compared to me in size It's hard to fathom just how massive I am, it's no surprise This is a red super giant, or possibly a red hyper giant star It goes by the name of Stevenson 2-18, it's the biggest by far It has a radius in kilometers of 1.4 billion in size As you can see, it's small compared to me in the night sky Maybe astronomers can discover a quasi-star like me someday Three Apollo astronauts on this mission. 
just done. The first use of the Apollo rover happened in 71 as well. This launched on a Apollo 15 mission and it went real swell. Apollo 16 launched in 1972. Astronauts explored the lunar highlands. This is true. In 72, Apollo 17 was launched and nothing went wrong. This marks the last walk on the moon since then. Astronomers has fun. The Oort cloud is the most distant region in the solar system. It's much farther than the Kuiper belt. We're filling you with this wisdom. The Oort cloud supposedly a giant spherical shell surrounding the rest of the solar system as you're propelled. There could be billions or even trillions of objects within the Oort cloud. That's what NASA projects. This Oort cloud could be the source of most comets. This is thought because of a comet's long period orbit. The distance of this Oort cloud from your sun is estimated to be 2,000 to 100,000 AU on its run. One astronomical unit or AU is the distance between Earth and the Sun like you see on your screen. This is the Oort cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our Sun. This is the Oort cloud, which is a theoretical concept. Astronomers had spun. The first description of the Oort cloud was in 1950 by Jan Hendrik, or the Dutch astronomer you see. This Oort cloud's divided into two regions you see here, a disc-shaped inner Oort cloud and an outer Oort cloud sphere. There's never been a confirmed direct observation of the Oort cloud, so it continues to be speculation. This region's thought to have formed 4.6 billion years ago after the formation of the planets in the solar system, though. This is the Oort cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our sun. This is the Oort cloud, which is a theoretical concept astronomers had spun. I have 
That's why you know I am a terrestrial planet and not a gas giant for what that is worth. Astronomers watched my host star from Earth and saw a planet in front. No surprise. Measuring this dip in brightness together with my star size estimate allows the calculation of my planet size. After I was discovered and independent, validation was supplied by the Spitzer Space Telescope, which confirmed I am a planet bona fide. My mass is still unconfirmed, but it does range in between two and eight Earth masses. This is all that they have.
with just two elephants making more than a million observations while traveling five miles per second. I take sharp pictures of objects in the sky such as galaxies, planets, and stars and transmit them back to Earth for you to see. Earth's telescopes are blocked by the atmosphere to see light from space. I orbit above this atmosphere to give a clear view of my star chase. My achievements are pinning down the age of the universe and I discovered two moons of Pluto, Nix, and Hydra, of course. I've helped determine the rate of which the universe is expanding in whole and discovered nearly every major galaxy is anchored by a black hole. The James Webb Telescope is an infrared space observatory launched in 2021 for space exploration. You see, I'm here to probe the cosmos and uncover the history of the universe from the Big Bang and alien planet formation and much more, of course. I'll take 30 days to travel a million miles to my home that's permanent orbiting the sun aligned with the earth to explore space is my intent when nasa built me 10 billion dollars was my cost my impressive primary mirror is 6.5 meters across it has 18 segments in a honeycomb structure i say and i am powered by an onboard solar array the solar array provides me with 2,000 watts of electrical power and a propulsion system to maintain my observatory orbit by the hour. I have enough propellant on board to last 10 years of operation to give a better understanding of the universe to every nation. I can see 13 billion light years back in time, which is 100 million years after the universe was born. I do refine. We're important because we give a view of space that is clear, orbiting above Earth's foggy atmosphere. We're the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Telescope, that's me. We're here to tell you about us and what we can see. This is a circumstellar disk called the Kuiper Belt. In the outer solar system is where its presence is felt. This is a circumstellar disk called the Kuiper Belt, extending from the orbit of Neptune so its ice doesn't melt. The Kuiper Belt is beyond Neptune's orbit, one of the largest structures in our solar system, I admit. It was discovered after Pluto was in 1930, but in 1990, Kuiper Belt's a region of leftovers that are icy from the solar system's early history. This is thought to be one of the main sources of comets, but the Kuiper Belt is mainly made of icy objects. There's lots of objects here and also rocky effects astronomers generally accept as the known dwarf planets. Orcus and Pluto both exist within the Kuiper Belt. Haumea and Koror and Maki Maki also make their presence felt. There are hundreds of thousands of objects in the Kuiper Belt region that have been there since the solar system began. This region's 30 astronomical units or 50 AU from the sun. That's the estimated size of the Kuiper Belt on its icy run. The Kuiper Belt's a trans-Neptunian region in the solar system. It's smaller than the asteroid belt but much larger as it spun. This Kuiper Belt's named after the Dutch astronomer Gerard Kuiper though he did not credit its existence I am sure. The Kuiper Belt's far past Neptune's orbit it's felt but the Oort cloud extends even further circling the Kuiper Belt. Lots of Kuiper Belt objects have moons that orbit daily. The most well known are Pluto, Haumea, Quarer, and also Aries. There are more than a trillion comets within the Kuiper Belt. Halley's Comet is the most famous on Earth or presence is felt. This is a circumstellar disk called the Kuiper Belt. In the outer solar system is where its presence is felt. This is a circumstellar disk called the Kuiper Belt. Extending from the orbit of Neptune so its ice doesn't melt. My name's Hygieia, minor planet, designation 10 Hygieia, a dwarf planet candidate in the asteroid belt, it's nice to meet ya. Discovered by Annibale de Gasparisa on the 12th of April in 1849, I did teach ya. Discovered at the Astronomical Observatory of Caparamonte is where I was first seen. 
I'm located in the main asteroid belt Between Jupiter and Mars is where I am felt I do have a diameter of 270 miles Or 434 kilometers all the while I have a mass which is 3% of the total mass of the asteroid belt And the fourth largest asteroid by volume and mass in your system dealt It's possible I'm a dwarf planet but no one knows for sure So the IAU has classified me as an asteroid until they're assured Observations with a very large telescope in 2018 Revealed that I'm nearly spherical in which I'm so keen I have a dark surface when observed from the Earth This is because of my position in in the outer main belt, of course. I was named Hygieia after the goddess of health, which is a Greek goddess as well as Roman I tell. It takes me 2033 Earth days to orbit the sun at 16.76 kilometers per second. I come as close as 2.79 AU to the sun on my run and reaching as far as 3.49 AU from the sun. I'm 1.78 AU from Earth's orbit at my closest point. There's an extremely wide berth between Hygieia and Earth is my point. Hygieia's small main belt asteroid spectroscopic survey is observed with a 2.4 meter Hiltner telescope primarily. This mass 2 observation indicates I may contain water and iron but wait also nickel ammonia cobalt and nitrogen that's a lot of new information about me for the win my properties are the least known out of the big four objects in the main belt humans have explored Earth habitable, why can life thrive on it? While the sun's plasma blasts towards us, what's protecting it? We're protected by Earth's magnetosphere, also called Earth's magnetic field. Let's learn more right here. There's a region around the planet beyond the atmosphere, created by Earth's internal magnetism called the magnetosphere. The reason life develops and continues to keep us alive is because of this magnetic environment it's why we thrive what's this magnetosphere and what does it protect us from let's take a closer look as we move towards the sun when the sun blasts plasma from the solar storm it emits huge bursts of energy and solar flares form solar flares are burst from the sun during an eruption pushed into space the solar and cosmic particle radiation this electromagnetic radiation from the sun does reach the earth and could destroy the atmosphere while on its run but the atmosphere is protected when these particles reach it by the magnetosphere deflecting when these particles do hit the magnetosphere changes shape when blasted with these particles directing them away from the atmosphere so they aren't harmful if our atmosphere were to deteriorate over time life on earth would perish you've learned this in this rhyme some of the particles aren't deflected away but have no fear when they get trapped in earth's magnetosphere the trapped particles get shot towards earth's two poles in the field lines also called the dipole which means two poles when these particles reach the atmosphere they react with oxygen and nitrogen causing the auroras that appear let's take a closer look at where this magnetosphere is formed we'll slice the earth in half so you're visually informed the electrically charged molten iron churns for sure below the earth's surface within the planet's outer core this generates a magnetic field large enough to race far past our earth's atmosphere out into space My name is TRES-2B, I'm a gas giant too far away to see, I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified, I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter I'll describe, with the discovery date of August 21st in 2006 is when they noticed me at first, I was confirmed a planet on September 8th in 2006 officially my birthday 
I was discovered by an astronomer named Francis T. O'Donovan. That is for sure. First seen on the Transatlantic Exoplanet Survey, or you could call it TRES. It's an acronym, I say. This all happened in California. You will see at the famous Palomar Observatory. My discovery also took place at the Lowell Observatory located in Arizona. Now, here's more about me. My name is T-R-E-S-2-B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. GSC 03549-02811 is the star that I orbit and a long named one. My parent star is a yellow main sequence star similar to your sun. Just to keep you on par, I belong to a constellation in the far northern sky. Its name is Draco, which is Latin for dragon, I imply. I'm 750 light years away from your solar system. That's where I'll stay. I'm thought to be the darkest known exoplanet, reflecting less than 1% of any life that does hit. My mass and radius does indicate I'm a gas giant with a ball composition similar to Jupiter. You're super giant. I'm likely to be tidally locked to my parent star. I'm extremely dark and completely bizarre. My name is T-R-E-S-2-B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You'll learn about them in this song and why you should care. The sun is a ball of plasma like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel. This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field. When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field, it gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots they are real this energy released is caused by magnetic knots when one of these knots breaks it releases solar flares so you are taught solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one these solar flares race through space at the speed of light creating a solar proton storm these storms are no delight when millions of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere. These storms are called coronal mass ejections as you see right here. These CMEs reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour. When they hit Earth, it doesn't hurt living beings even with such power. The Earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm. When a CME is too big, it creates a solar super storm that occur once or twice a a century so you've been warned if a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age it would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun i do say if this type of cme traveled across space towards the earth it would reach you in one day yeah that's fast for what that is worth its shock wave would compress earth's magnetic field making it frail the two magnetic fields would merge stretching earth's field into a thin tail this stretch tail can't contain this energy anymore. When it snaps, it releases explosive energy towards the Earth that it stored. This creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm. Normally, no living thing on Earth would even know it had formed. The only thing it would affect is your electricity because you rely on this so much it would disrupt human life, you see. Because Earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers, this geomagnetic storm would shut down the power of humans would be overturned. If one of these storms hit the earth, electricity and internet would not work. All things powered by electricity would turn off along with all networks. Computers wouldn't work along with 
with phones and electronic devices No refrigerators or any other household appliances Even though we can't stop these terrible solar storms Their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned Engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids Until the solar storm passes Earth Preventing blackouts we forbid Humans need to prepare for these types of storms To prevent being thrown back to the Stone Age before they form A cool event humans experience from any solar storm Is the Aurora Borealis at the two poles is where they perform I'm the life-giving sun, you all need me to live But I am unpredictable, so solar storms I give I am the sun, the center of your solar system I do erupt intense high energy radiation This radiation I expel is called the solar flare you learn about them in the song and why you should care I'm a supermassive black hole found in the center of almost all massive galaxies I'm a supermassive Like me, the primordial's a tiny hypothetical black hole. In 1974, Stephen Hawking theorized its role. Primordials were formed in the early universe, but we'll learn about this more when I teach that topic's course. On to the most common type called the stellar black hole. But let's first see why a star exists before it loses control. The pressure from the nuclear fuel in the core pushes outward so greatly. While the of an equal power pushing in is caused by gravity this equal pressure does create the star's main sequence stage that means the star is stable in its present burning age when stars with the sun's mass run out of nuclear fuel in its core it becomes a red giant that quietly becomes a white dwarf but stars with 25 the mass of your solar system sun runs out of nuclear fuel its gravity crushes the core and becomes a stellar it's the most common type in the universe now i will tell you how i'm created of course i'm a super massive black hole the third type of black hole seen believed to be found in the center of any major galaxy a black hole's a region of space where the force of gravity so strong that nothing not even light can escape you've learned in this song how i acquired my mass is still yet to be determined and astronomers are still working on how i'm formed that is certain some think i'm formed from the collapse of a massive cloud of gas during the early stages of the formation of galaxies with mass my parts start with the accretion disk orbiting around me it's superheated gas and dust swirling around the singularity the singularity is the very center of a black hole you see made up of matter collapsed into a region of infinite density the event horizons the radius around the singularity which energy and matter cannot escape the black hole's gravity the innermost stable orbits the last place material orbit safely without the risk of falling past the point of no return in me a photon sphere is a location where gravity is so strong that light can travel in circles and orbiting the black hole are photons i feed on stars dust and gas and produce jets of near light speed blasting particles and radiation out of my poles as you can see these are relativistic jets and the last part i'll talk about